Hello everybody, I'm Peggy Boucher. I could have started this talk with a famous sentence of, sentence of Forrest Gump. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Personally, I think life is an adventure. And each of you, without you knowing, is an adventure. Let me show you. Basically, I was not destined to be a sailor. I was born and grew up in Avion by Lake Geneva, quite away from the sea. When I was eight years old, I often watched TV programs about climbing and sailing. And I said to my parents, one day I will be an adventurer. They answered me then, pass your exam first. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> Few months later, Daddy fixed on the wall above my little desk the following sentence. It is not because things are difficult we do not dare, but because we do not dare they are difficult. This quote from Seneca then became my creed. I understood the first step for the most difficult. Afterwards, it was all a question of courage, motivation and determination. At 18, um, I uh, discovered my passion for the sea through maritime books. Then I met a famous French sailor, Olivier de Carsozon, who was then preparing his round-the-world sailing race. And the way he was running his challenge convinced me to prepare an adventure project. I tried to get closer to the sea and passed a master in shipping at the University of Plymouth. Then I used to sail every week, whatever the weather conditions. Then I went to Brest in Brittany to prepare for a master in management. This was where my challenge took root. One day, I switched the television on and watched a report about a man who rode across the Pacific Ocean. It was love at first sight. Not for the guy, but <laughs> for his challenge. I was fascinated by his tenacity, by his fighting spirit. I knew no woman had ever attempted to row across any ocean before. It was an additional motivation. And rowing, in comparison to sailing, did not require a technical knowledge. I easily understood it was not a physical question, but a mental force. So I thought, if a man can do it, I can. It seemed to be so obvious to me. And as you can imagine, you do not cross the Atlantic by just buying a rowing license. I knew that I had to prepare this project for at least two years in advance. I knew that I have to make a lot of efforts and sacrifices to achieve my goal. At the end of my studies, I was 23 and was employed by the company Alcatel as expert financial engineer in Paris. And during the day, when I got time, I tried to get sponsorship. And most of the time, at the end of my meetings with communication managers, they told me, if you were my daughter, I would never let you go. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard this sentence, I knew it was over. I felt like quitting. I was discouraged. But in a way, it was an amazing motivation test for the future, because I didn't want to let my dream be just a dream. In 1997, I was 24. I resigned from my job and joined a team to sail across the Atlantic in order to have a greater experience of the sea. But it was a nightmare, because <laughs> The skipper wanted to discourage me every day about my project. He kept on telling me I had no experience of the sea and it was only for men. And believe me, this crossing reinforced my decision to go on my own. And as he said, better be alone than in bad companies. 
<laughs> Back to Brest then. I invested all my savings to buy a rowing boat which had already been tried and tested. And as you can imagine, hunting sponsorship costs a lot of money. And I needed to get a job ASAP. <laughs> I was recruited by the company 3M as logistics manager. And by Christmas 1997, I got a fantastic Christmas gift. I got a sponsor. It was not really a Christmas gift from my parents. <laughs> On January 1998, I resigned from my job and created my own company to manage a project. We had exactly, exactly 45 days to finish the preparation of the boat and the communication side of the project in order to avoid hurricane period in the Caribbean. In March 1998, I left from the Canary Island to row to West Indies, which involved 3,000 nautical miles. I was looking forward to setting out. I felt so happy. I felt so free and also so proud of what we were able to do during the last weeks. After, uh, after 3,000 nautical miles, 79 days at sea, rowing 10 hours a day, and only one day away from the finishing line, in a raging sea, the boat suddenly capsized. I endured nine long hours straddle on the hull of my boat. Just below me, two four-meter shark. I was weak. I had lost 15 kilograms. But I was still in fighting spirit. I survived and was rescued at the very last minute. I was the first to demonstrate that a woman can achieve such a feat. Of course, I rode across the Atlantic, but 60 miles left out of 3,000 miles. They would have been the hardest, but also the most exciting. And for me, it was an unfinished victory. And I knew that if I didn't start again, I would have a kind of block for any new future challenge. I had to start again. 18 months later, more determined than ever, I left Cap Verde Island on November 1999. And 800,000 later, I arrived in Martinique Island on January 2000 with the extraordinary satisfaction of having achieved my goal. And believe me, I will never forget this moment. On the right, Martinique Island. Just behind me, the skyline and in my mind, the map of the Atlantic. And I could say, I did it. 5,300 miles were necessary to reach this finishing line. And I thought of my motto, I wrote down on my two square meters cabin before the departure, always there, sometimes given, but Never give up. I know that everything that happens to me was helpful and useful. So let me humbly share with you a few stuff I understood during this rich and human experiences. Do not be scared of failing in your life. Just act as if it were impossible to fail. Don't be afraid of daring because there is no good or bad experience. No matter what it happens, it will be beneficial if you take advantage of it and use each obstacle as a springboard. Stay focused on your goals and always see yourself as a winner. And remember that we never lose. We learn or we win. Muscle your courage 
and audacity. Courage and audacity are muscles. The more they are used, the stronger they become. They are going to, uh, are going to act just like a dynamo. And thanks to this exercise, your, your mind is getting stronger. So train them, practice them. Take risk. It's always more dangerous to submit than taking risk. Because in your life, just like in a fight, by trying to avoid hits, we do not know if we are able to absorb them or even to return them. So don't be afraid of fighting, falling and getting up. Because without risk taking, there's no innovations. There's no changes. There's no creativity. So take risk. Be adventure of your life. Time is not renewable. You can make money, but you can't make time. So don't waste it. Optimize it. Learn to manage your priorities. And learn to slow down, to move forward, because time is precious. Do not feed the fear. Be aware that you're your best friend, of course, but in a way, you're your worst enemy. So identify fear, <coughs> confront and overcome it. And keep in your mind that fear is like a water leak. You have to prevent it from coming into your mind because once insight is going to gain ground and invade your self-confidence and your determination. So stay focused and concentrate on what you want, not on what you fear. Choose your words. Oops. Words have an extraordinary impact in your, on your mind. <coughs> With words, you can destroy or encourage people. Nowadays, precaution, care, problem, crisis, have replaced in our vocabulary action, solution, success, hope. So don't forget how the choice of words is important especially when you bring up a child, especially when you manage a team. And for example, just a simple word, thank you. It enables the people you work with to show how grateful you are, to show how valuable they are, and also to encourage them to progress and carry on. And I think it's very important uh, to have a person with trust in you. This person will be your lighthouse when you're getting lost, when you're getting scared. She will be able to find the good words to encourage you. Oops. <laughs> Cultivate the sense of humor. I've been told by an English friend that, uh, uh, yeah, English friend, uh, Janet, that English people had invented the sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with her. <laughs> um, when dialogue is getting impossible or quite difficult, sense of humor may be an excellent means of communication because humor enables to diffuse situations and conflicts. A few months ago, I saw a tramp on the street. He was very popular because every day he changed the text on his small board. Wanted money to buy a Ferrari, wanted money to, buy, to build a swimming pool. He was very successful on the street. Actually, didn't stay, didn't stay a long time. He got a job very quickly. And also, all this time, for this, to say, Humor is really important. 
and it gives you a sunshine in your life. So don't let it be masked by too many clouds. Let's be actors. Let's be adventurer in your life because life is a fabulous challenge to take up. And at a time when we talk about energy savings, do not save yours. Audacity, courage, determination are your own and renewable energy. So do not exist. Leave each to your own Atlantic. <laughs>